welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Cube Game. Today we're continuing along with our Icoral Lair of Behemoth set review. Yesterday we looked at Mono White, talked about our favorite cards of the set, talked about the relations of the cards that are coming out based on the cards that we have, which cards are strictly better, which cards are strictly worse, stuff like that. Today we're continuing on with Mono Blue. So, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified of our future uploads. And most importantly, join our Discord link in the description below to partake in one of our many community events. I think we have like seven or eight of them going on right now. We have free to play tournaments with uh, Artisan as a format. So zero rare, zero mythic. We also have brawl tournament for you guys to partake in. So it's not such a sweaty environment. It's really beginner friendly. Um, so you guys are still getting to compete for cash prizes while not really um, just hitting these Jessica Fires decks over and over and over and over again. So with that being said, uh, I'm not going to ramble on any longer about unimportant, irrelevant things. We're taking a look at Mono Blue. Let's get right into it, you guys. Mono Blue is going to start off with a G's Turtle. This is a vanilla creature, a 0-5 blocker. We see this in almost every set. We have Anticipate, this is a reprint. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. We have oh, Arch Archibalorg. <laughs> I do not know how to pronounce that, you guys. It costs seven, it's a Leviathan. The mutate cost is six. Whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step, and it is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So this is a very expensive creature, however, in limited, uh, absolutely, and it is only an uncommon, you guys, so that's pretty neat. We have Avian Oddity for 4. This is a 2-4 bird with flying, cycling for 3, and whenever you cycle Avian Oddity, put a flying counter on target creature you control. Boon of the Wishgiver for 6. This is a sorcery card. Draw four cards, cycling for two, capture sphere for four, and enchantment aura with flash. When capture sphere enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. We have convolute for three, counter target spell unless its controller pays four. This is a reprint. Chrys Crystal Crystalison for four. This is a one six crab with flash. I cannot pronounce these crab creatures, you guys. Dream Tail Heroine for 5. This is a 3-4 Elemental Bird with Flying. And whenever this creature mutates for 4, draw a card. We have an Escape Protocol for 2, an Enchantment. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay 1. When you do Exile Target Artifact or Creature card you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Essence Scatter for 2. This is a reprint. Counter Target Creature Spell. Facet Reader for 2. This is a 1-2, you can pay one, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. Frost Lynx for three. This is an elemental cat, a 2-2. Two -two. When Frost Lynx enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. I believe this is a reprint as well. Frost Veil Ambush for five, an instant. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step, and you can cycle it for two. Glimmer Belt for two. This is an elemental jellyfish, a 1-3 Hello Elemental Cavalcade with flying. You can pay two to untap it. Very, very interesting. Gust of Wind for four. Sorcery. The spell costs two less to cast if you control a creature with flying. Return target non-land permanent. You don't control to its owner's hand and draw a card. Neat. That's pretty cool. Hampering Snare for two. This is an instant. Creatures your opponent control get minus two, minus zero until end of turn. Cycling for two. Keep safe for two. This is an instant counter target spell that targets a permanent you control. Draw a card. What? This is a very good card, you guys. I like that. That might be my favorite common of the set. Mystical Subduel, or Mystic Subduel, sorry, for two. This is an enchantment aura with flash. Enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two, and loses all abilities. Mythos of Aluna for four. This is a sorcery. Create a token that's copy of target permanent. If Gruel was spent to cast this spell instead, create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except the token has when this permanent enters the battlefield. If it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. 
So that's actually pretty cool. Neutralize for three, counter target spell, cycling for two. Of one mind for three, a sorcery spell. This spell costs two less to cast if you control a human creature and a non-human creature. Draw two cards. Very interesting. Draw two cards for one. That could be fun. Ominous Seas for two. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. Remove eight foreshadow counters from Ominous Seas. Create an 8-8 eight, eight blue Kraken creature token. Cycling for two. Phase Dolphin for three. This is an elemental whale, a 1-4, so another elemental cavalcade card. Whenever Phase Dolphin attacks, another attacking creature uh, cannot be blocked this turn. So that's really cool. So he can be blocked. However, uh, another attacking creature cannot be blocked this turn. It's good to keep your Scorch Spitters alive. Hollywig uh, Symbote for two. This is a 1-3 frog. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Pouncing Shark for five. This has flash and is a 4-3 Whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Reconnaissance mission for four, and enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card cycling for two. That is pretty neat, you guys. I really like that. C Dasher Octopus for three. This has a mutate cost of two. The two two with flash, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Oh! That's so good. Shark Typhoon for six, an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Cycling X plus two. Whenever you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. Very interesting. That adds a lot of utility and one of the better cycling options that we've seen because you're not just drawing a card, you're creating an XX blue shark with flying as well. Uh, startling development. For two, an instant, until end of next turn, target creature becomes a blue serpent with base, power, and toughness, 4-4, four, four, cycling for one. That is a very interesting common for sure. Thieving Otter for three, it's a 2-2. Two, two. When Thieving Otter deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. Voracious Great Shark for five, it's a 5-4 with flash. And whenever Voracious Great Shark enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell, Wingfold uh, Tehran for six. When Wakefold Teron enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a hexproof counter on it, and he is a 3-6, that's pretty cool. Wingspan Mentor. This is a 1-3, if I can get to it here. Human Wizard, when the Wingspan Mentor enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on non-human creature you control. You can pay 3, tap it to put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control with flying, so that's actually pretty neat. That is Blue in Ikora Lair of Behemoths. What are your favorite cards of the set, you guys? We've seen a lot of really, really heavy cards here. My favorite rare has got to be the C Dasher Octopus by far. My favorite common might be Reconnaissance Mission. It might be this Poliwag Symbol. Uh, it's got incredible value to it. So does Ominous Seas. And did we see any bomb mythics here, you guys? I don't think Blue has very many mythics to choose from, even. Does it have a single mythic? It does not. There are no mono blue mythics in the set, you guys. So we're unable to pick from one. I won't ask the same of you. You'll be looking for a while. So again, we do have lots of really good rares to make up for that. Voracious Great Shark is really good. Sea Dasher Octopus is good. Even the Shark Typhoon, I somehow have a feeling, is going to be really good. So with that all being said, you guys, we are live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. I'd love to have your company. You can also jump in our Discord, link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified of our future uploads. We're going to be back later looking at Mono Black for Ikora Lair of Behemoth set review. Again, thanks for watching, you guys. Make sure to have a great day. Take care. If you liked today's video, be sure to check out some of our other content. We built playlists for our guides for beginners. And then we also have our Greatest Hits, which is a collection of our most popular videos. You can also subscribe if you're interested in winning up to 500,000 gems. So do that, tap that like button, send this out to a friend who you think might be interested in it as well, and have a great day.